I have heard that you are interested in becoming a hobbit, my friend, so welcome to the Shire, the centre of hobbit culture in Middle-earth, where life is evolved slowly and every meal is a celebration, most specifically of simplicity and joy. And if you are in fact intrigued by the hobbit way of life, longing for days filled with ease, free of the tribulations and trials of adventures, then you are in for a delightful journey into the culinary centre of Hobbiton. So let us, you and I, embark upon a delicious voyage, exploring each and every meal that punctuates the Hobbit's day. This will ensure that you are well prepared to adopt the most comfortable of lifestyles. That's right, today we are diving in to the meals daily of the Hobbits. Grab a seat, grab a drink, I've got a story for you. As the sun peaks over the rolling hills, a hobbit's day begins. Breakfast is the cornerstone of the day, a hearty feast to fuel the morning's endeavours. Picture a table laden with bread, freshly baked, sizzling rashers of bacon and eggs cooked to perfection. A pot of tea is on, always steaming, something that will complement the robust flavours of the proteins and the breads. This meal is the first joy of the hobbit's day and is very important. Time for nourishment in preparation for the long hours ahead. As a matter of fact, the meal is so important, we have it twice. So we will move on to second breakfast. That's right, why should we stop at one? Roughly an hour after first breakfast, second breakfast will grace the tables. However, this is a lighter affair than first breakfast, often featuring fruits, pastries, or perhaps a light cake or two. It is a gentle reminder that life was made to be enjoyed with a little bit of sweetness to savour amidst the morning tasks, such as gardening or perhaps sorting through your books and old maps. And of course, to follow second breakfast, we have Elevensies. As the name suggests, it arrives late in the morning. It is a precursor to lunch and more or less it is an opportunity to cleanse the palate. A proper hobbit will typically take it with light tea and perhaps a biscuit or scone or two. And if you must, there can also be small sandwiches. The point is, is it must offer a bit of pause and refreshment before the day carries on with its laborious tasks. And next comes the midday meal, luncheon, which is another hearty repast that serves as a social focal point for hobbit culture. You see, hobbits cherish this meal for its communal spirit. Gathering friends and family around ginormous platters of cold meats and cheeses, and of course hearty salads, all shared with laughters and tales of the morning past, just simple stories of what one is getting on with. And as the shadows lengthen, we head into afternoon tea, which is a hobbit's respite from the day's labours. And this meal, of course, will feature a selection of teas, complemented by cakes and scones and jams. It is a time for leisure, for enjoying the company of others, friends and family, and of course for indulging in the sweeter things in life. And next, we have supper. As dust settles, supper commences. The main event, a multi-course extravaganza, that of course showcases the very best of Hobbit cuisine. From rich stews to roasted meats, to an array of side dishes to celebrate the Shire's bounty. Supper is a time of innumerable joys, a meal that is intended to be lingered over. There has never been a hobbit friendship that was formed over supper that didn't at least last until the very next one. And after supper, we have the final meal of the hobbit day, and that is dinner. Just before dreams begin to whisper in our ears, that is when it is time for dinner. A lighter meal to ensure contentment in slumber. Think of soups and sliced bread with honey on it. Or if you are naughty, perhaps a small sweet treat. A gentle end to a day lived fully and well. And this is just the beginning of a day in the life of a hobbit. There are so many more details and nuances to the ways that these wonderful creatures live. Days that are measured in meals, moments and contentment. 
Some of you already with a penchant for bare feet and your hairy toes. Wasn't this fascinating? Now you're ready to begin embracing the Hobbit way, with love for food and fellowship and the quiet joys that life has to offer. I welcome you to your new beginnings in the heart of Middle-earth. Stay bloodthirsty, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one.